Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're gonna discuss the PPU. So with that said, let's do this. Alright, so now you're gonna continue on where we left off from the previous video. You're gonna go over the PPU and as a, as usual I'm still using the Nerdy Nightmare website. And now let's go over the main subject, the PPU for the NES. So let's go over the PPU, which is a custom made chip made by Nintendo for the NES. And its sole purpose is to display graphics, like I mentioned before. And like I mentioned before as well, it does contain two kilobytes of RAM, which is enough to store two backgrounds or name tables in our tutorials and some other information that is so purposes to be displayed in screen, like sprites, background palettes or tiles, some attributes, some pattern tables and so forth. So all the information needed to display to the screen. And our code does not really change the behavior or the people. Well, we can change some settings, but it does not change the PPUs, uh, how it runs. The first thing it does is it goes to our character memory and fetches all the sprites in the background. And it's going to do that one scan line at a time. And for whatever reason, if there is more than eight sprites in a single scan line, so the first eight are drawn and the rest are ignored. And that's why you're seeing some games where there's a little bit of flickering or will blink between the strings is because if you, I don't know if I mentioned on the Atari 600 series, a method on which you could use if you want to display more sprites at once. And I'm gonna use the Atari 600 example because he only had really two sprites, player zero and player one. So let's say you wanted to display four characters and you only have uh, two sprites. It, without using the settings to duplicate the same uh, sprites. So what you would do is have, let's say, sprites, first and second sprite drawn, and then a frame later, you're gonna draw the next two sprites, so sprites three and four. And you're gonna keep switching for every frame. So you give this flickering or blinking effect for those sprites, but you can display more sprites at once on the, for the cost of blinkering or the flickering effect that happens when you have too much sprites going on. So that's a workaround that some people use. But after all the sprites, then the background is fetched from memory. And when all the scan line is done, so it's from a, the CRT TV has a Ray, this screw left from right. When it's, all that is done, all the information is out, and it's gonna keep repeating the process until it hits the vertical blank. And uh, let me go over how uh, it works. All right, so I'm bringing back the pitfall picture from the Atari 600 video to show you guys or explain how a CRT TV works since the process is the same. Some information on these graphics we don't have to worry about, like clock counts or machine cycles, but it does display the, all the same functionality that a CRT TV goes through. So let me show you guys how that works. And how a CRT TV works, it does have a magnet on it that moves a head around that shoot beams across the screen. And those beams is gonna display you those are pixels or the colors uh, next to it, as you see here on this picture. So it's gonna shoot one pixel or one color at a time, and it's gonna begin all the way to the top left, and it's gonna scroll to the right. And then when, when it's done, it's playing the single scan line, so a whole single cross pixels or horizon pixels. When that's done, it's gonna come down to the next scan line level and begin the whole process again. So it's gonna go 
Let me show you here this picture. As you see, it's going to repeat the same process from top left all the way to the bottom right. So here back to the main picture, you see this vertical sync. And that is a signal sent by the TV that says, hey, a new frame is going to be displayed right now. So I know your, your gun is all, or well, it's much the gun that keeps shooting beings to the screen is all the way to the bottom. Sometimes you go back up and be ready for the next frame. So that's the vertical sync is. And then during that period that it's called a vertical blank. And that is where most of your code is going to run generally. Oh, if it, um, or game loop at least, should I say. So all the, most of it at least, if you want to, well, if you want to have a smooth running game. And then the graphics is going to start in this plane over here. And here we have a horizontal blank. On this picture, it is shown that he has a big frame, a big chunk over here, all the way to the left, but it's really split on the middle. So let me show you a better picture. So here is a diagram how a single scan line signal for an RF channel works for our CHTV. So we're going to send a signal or a sync and those syncs are pretty much telling the CRT TV gun like, Hey, you are at the end of the scan line. So go all the way to the left or Hey, this is the beginning of a scan line. So that's oh, the signal telling be ready. And here you have the back porch, which is going to give her color birth. So it tells us what colors you're going to use. And then you're gonna get to the display video video area. And here you see the luminance and the chroma. So the how bright the thing is, luminance and chromas, all the different chroma that's gonna be displayed, and that gives us the color range. And after that's done, so the front porch is the signal to reset. So we, all the way to the, the end of the scan line, go down and start a new, new one all over again. And lastly, all of this uh, vertical blank is different depending on our output system. The NTSC, the North American version, does run, as I mentioned before, 60 frames per second. And the PAL does run a 50 frames per second, and that's related to electricity currency, so you can see hertz sometimes. However, that means that since the NTSC is running faster, it does going to require less frames and the power system is going to have a bigger frame, meaning that the NES is always going to display a full 256 by 240 pixels regardless, but the NTSC or the North American version is going to cut the top eight and, and bottom eight rows of the horizontal pixels. So that's the price that we have to pay for being a higher frame system is that the policy system is going to be 50 frames, so 10 frames shorter, but it's going to give them a higher resolution. And another drawback if you're using the policy system is going to be the sounds is tied to those frames. So it might sound a bit, bit slower. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when making our games. And that pretty much covers the PPU for the NES. So we went over from what it is, what it does. We went also over the CRT TV, how that works. It's not as essential as the Atari 600 series, but it's still a great subject to know in order to make your games work properly. And in the next video, we're going to go over the graphics system overview. And I'm going to be using another emulator instead of the FCUX. I'm going to be using Messam, which is pretty much one of my, those two are my favorite uh, emulators to work with in development. But that's going to be in the next video. If you guys like what I've been doing so far, uh, feel free to hit a subscribe if you. Oh, if you hit this part of the video so far, 
or this series. And with that said, thanks for watching, and I see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.